I may have gone a little overboard with my potatoes. This is only some of the potatoes that I have growing here. These are Red Nordlands, Yukon Golds, and White Superiors. And I've got another whole uh, 35 or so of them in another uh, room under lights. So yeah, maybe I went a little too far. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a solo cup. This is 18 ounces, the cup. To begin, I'll start by cutting some holes in the bottom. And basically, I'm just cutting right along the edge. So if you can see down there, right, <laughs> right down there in the corner, uh, I've cut a hole and I'm gonna cut three of them. And that way later on, I'll be able to uh, water them and uh, have them uh, soak up the water from the bottom. It also to allow the water to drain out. So as you see, I got three uh, holes in the bottom now. What I'm going to do is take a handful of dirt and put about a, an inch worth in the bottom of this cup. You just take the uh, potato and seed it in the dirt, right on top of the dirt. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll just take soil, and it's very loose soil and dry. It doesn't have to be wet at all. You don't have to water it or anything, but you want to be careful when you're putting the, uh, the soil in because you don't want to break those chits off. Not that it's going to be uh, uh, disastrous, but you've got the uh, plant growing. Why, uh, why slow down the process? So take the uh, cup and just fill it up all the way with soil and then just lightly pack it down. And that's it. Make sure you label your uh, potato and put it to the side. Now, probably in about two weeks time, these potatoes will have sprouted. And at that point, once the plant actually starts growing and showing up above the ground, that's when you'll want to start watering. In the meantime, I'm going to do another one. About an inch worth of uh, dirt on the bottom. Take one of the seed potatoes and I'm going to go this way with it. And again, I'll show you, it's just sitting on the bottom on the dirt. And now slowly fill it with soil and being careful not to break off those chits. Firm the soil down. And then I'll label it and we'll be ready for the next one. All right, so I'm going to uh, continue doing these potatoes and I'll be uh, back. Okay, after 30 potatoes, there we are. So I've got 10 of each variety in there. So I'll update you in a couple of weeks as these things uh, grow and uh, we'll see how they uh, progress throughout the year. All right. These potatoes if you recall, it came pre-chitted. So I put them in the cups with the, uh, buried them in the cups, put a little bit of soil in the bottom, buried them in the cups, and then uh, filled it up. And then the, within a week's time, they actually started popping through. And uh, so now it's been about two weeks that they've been in these cups and they're ready now to go into the buckets. I'm putting in two potatoes in each bucket. Initially I was going to put in four, but I think that's just going to be too many. It won't allow the uh, uh, plants to develop the potatoes sufficiently. I have these pails, which I got from a local bakery. They were throwing them away. They're probably about four gallons or so. And they held actually uh, eggs. 
So uh, I had cleaned them out, and I've used them for different uh, things. Last year I actually stored uh, compost in them for a while until I was ready for the uh, put them on, put the compost on the beds. But what I'm doing is I drilled some holes in the bottom of the buckets, and I'm putting a piece of burlap in the bottom just to help prevent. Yep, <laughs> just to help prevent the. Uh, soil from falling through and I mean those are fairly large holes and that's so that they have good drainage potatoes aren't don't want to stand in uh, wet dirt so I'm putting the burlap in the bottom that stops the uh, soil from falling through and what I'll do is I'm just taking a scoop here and throwing that in the pail and then like a another half scoop what I'm doing is putting two inches of soil in the bottom and you might be able to see the shadow line there that's about two inches or so and just even it out here I'm taking the plant and just give it a little squeeze around and then turn it over and push on the bottom and then it'll come out and as you can see got a really nice root system going here with these plants so now I take it I'm just gonna stick it in the bucket another white superior Even though this plant isn't as developed as that one, it still has a really nice root system. This is a real great way to get the potatoes started. Now I started a little bit late in getting all my potatoes done. This you can actually start like in January, get start chitting them, plant them in February in these cups, and then you'll have them to plant in March uh, into your buckets. Now, I just carefully start filling in with this soil. Now, this soil is a mix of my chicken compost, uh, a bag of uh, potting soil, cheap potting soil, and also um, peat moss. And it's mixed up really well. Now I'm just going to bury these plants in it. And that's it. Now, as you can see, the <laughs> plants have been buried under the soil, but of course they'll just grow up through there and the potatoes will form under the ground, under the uh, soil there. So I've got them all done. There's 16 containers there. Well, actually there's two more potato plants that need to be done. And they're going to be planted individually, but they're kind of small plants just yet, so I want to give them a little bit more time to grow before I plant them in the buckets. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give them all a, uh, a high nitrogen fertilizer, a natural one. I'm going to be using blood meal. The uh, NPK values on it, I believe, are 1200. Yes, 1200. I don't know if you can see that there. So it's a high nitrogen fertilizer, it'll be slow acting, and uh, 
should help the uh, plants uh, with some vigorous growth. You can't have that. Kodak likes to uh, help me plant my vegetables. Doesn't much like his vegetables, but likes to help plant so he can dig them up. So I've got one cup of uh, the blood meal here, and I think I'm going to give about a tablespoon to uh, each bucket. So 16 tablespoons in a cup. So just enough for all of these uh, plants. And now I'll water them in. I'll give a gallon of water. To, Kodak, get out of there. <laughs> I'll give a gallon of water to each of the buckets to uh, soak them in. Now over time, this dirt will uh, compact down a little bit. It'll settle. So I can always add more uh, soil to it afterwards. I will end up putting these uh, buckets up on bricks to allow the water to drain out because if they just sit on the ground, the water won't drain properly from them. Now it will take a little time for this water to go down in all the buckets because there is peat moss in here, which was dry. So it's going to uh, resist the uh, water for a little while. But it'll eventually soak through. It's the first day of May and the uh, potato plants are really coming along. So they're really growing up nice in these buckets. I have them here on my deck underneath the grapevine pergola and looks like they're getting a good amount of sun and shade plus plenty of water because we've had a ton of rain so that probably helps with the uh, with the growing and have a few more over there as well and there's actually Still a few more on my patio that haven't uh, sprouted yet. They were late in uh, developing, so they might end up turning to be uh, turning out to be uh, my late crop potatoes, my main crop. Interestingly, though, it looks like the potatoes are start getting ready to flower. At least some of them are. I'm getting some more buds over here. But not on others. Well, on these here too. You're getting them right there. So, I don't know, is that early? This is really the first time I've grown potatoes successfully. This, And for me, this is a success with how they've grown. So, uh, it's been, I don't know, a little over a month and a half. And I guess they should be getting ready to... Uh, flower and then probably in another month or so they'll be uh, ready for harvest it just seemed a little early to me that they would be growing already the flowers and there's an update it's uh, June 2nd and while I was watering my potatoes I happened to notice we actually have some potatoes <laughs> so that's good there's a there's another one in here here we go oops Got to be careful, but yeah, we've got some potatoes in here, so I'm trying to keep them covered. Oh, and there's another one there. Yeah, so we got a bunch of potatoes in here. Yeah, there it is. So keep them covered up. And in one of these other buckets, I saw there was actually a green one, so I covered that up, and hopefully uh, it'll end up not being uh, unfit to eat. It's June 24th, so we're a little bit over three months uh, after they were uh, 
put in. Uh, March 19th is the date. That March 9th is the date. So that makes it uh, you know, over 100 days. So the, these should be uh, ready to go. This is a red Nordland potato. So we'll see how uh, well it does. It looks like the plant is pretty much uh, died out. It looks like it's gotten maybe eaten by some caterpillars too, or uh, slugs. I think it's uh, reached its uh, end point. So what I'll do is I'm gonna cut off the uh, plants and then we'll dump out the uh, bucket and see what we've got in terms of potatoes. I see a worm in there. <laughs> First thing that I notice is that the burlap that I put in the bottom is almost completely uh, disintegrated. It's not even like a fabric anymore. So we'll throw that in there and let's see what we got. Well, we've got a couple of potatoes. Yeah, not a bad harvest. Oh yeah, here's our nice worm. I guess that indicates we got some good soil here. Got a couple of worms in here. Now all this white speckle on here, I'm not certain, but that could be a sign of blight. I'll have to check into that. It would be a shame if it was, because these look like some decent potatoes. And it might just mean I just have to use them up right away, because they won't store at all. They'll just uh, go bad if that is blight. So I did a quick uh, internet search, and according to one uh, college extension site, it says that uh, because potatoes are essentially underground uh, roots, the um, potato itself has what are called lenticels and in wet conditions they become clogged and aren't able to uh, uh, expel gas which is their purpose so the uh, when they become clogged like that they end up swelling up and you get those little raised white spots on the uh, skin of the uh, potato they do say um, they probably won't store as long as other potatoes, but they're perfectly fine to eat. Small ones, that's the seed potato. Now the plants, I won't compost. I'm just gonna take them, put them out with the, uh, the yard waste uh, collection. Because I don't want the, if, regardless of whether it's blight or not, I don't want the, any potential diseases getting into the compost pile. So I'll put that out uh, for collection. Like it might be it. Mushroom. It's not a particularly good ball for the uh, potatoes. And it could be because that is blight. Also, I think because I did have two plants in the uh, container, and I think it just limits the size of how big the potatoes can grow. So next year, when I plant the potatoes, it'll definitely just be one plant per bucket, and then they'll be able to hopefully grow to their full size. But I'm gonna take these inside and weigh them, and uh, let's see what we got. This is also a red Nordland. We'll cut the plants off. Just 
Go right in. This looks like a nice batch here. Save as much of the soil as I can. And weighing them, and we're just shy of two pounds on these red Nordland potatoes. Not bad. It's about what I was hoping to get from each bucket, about two pounds, a little bit over two pounds actually. So this is the one that's come closest so far. We've got another no-name potato here. But since it was next to that last uh, white potato, maybe it's in that same family. Oh wait, here it is. Can you tell me what that says? <laughs> Make sure you if you're going to mark them, that they actually, the marker actually stays on it. <laughs> and wow. wow. Yes. There we go. We've got one potato. That's really good. And all the rest are tiny. That's And I keep these little potatoes, even though they might seem worthless, but they're good for stews and things like that. Oh, there we go. Here's a few more anyway. Well, that's the seed potato, I guess. Ooh, this one feels a little rotten. So, and this one's got some green on it, so these we won't be eating. Well, here's the seed potato. Or is it the... No, it's another potato, I guess. <laughs> All right. Potatoes do look the same as the others. And I'm going to go with them being white superiors. That's just what they look like to me. I'm going to weigh it. But uh, I'm not quite sure why it went bad. So including that one green potato and the one that's going rotting, rotten, it's one and a half pounds of potatoes. If we remove these bad potatoes, yeah, down to 1.3 ounces. So just some final thoughts about growing the potatoes in the buckets. It was generally successful overall, uh, although those buckets I showed didn't <laughs> show the greatest yields. A lot of the other buckets produced about two pounds per bucket, sometimes a little less, a lot of times a little less. But uh, that again, I think is because I had two plants in each bucket, so next year definitely just one plant per bucket and I think that'll uh, allow each potato plant to bulk up their uh, tubers and otherwise it was uh, a fun process it was a good learning experience and got a whole bunch of potatoes out of it so from about three pounds four pounds of potatoes all together I probably got about 30 pounds of uh, potato yield not bad Next year, I hope to do better. Okay, thanks for watching.